Hello and welcome back to the Black Eye Podcast. I'm your host, Mish. Yeah. Oh, the reason why I'm doing this video is in shock. I was watching a couple of lives, not not a few hours ago, uh, about the lawsuit, this horrific abuse. This man, if this is, is true, and I personally believe that it is. Oh my God! What the allegations myself because oof, I just couldn't handle it i couldn't take it i just i watched other people do it and i had just done a a couple of uh videos uh, about rhoda osmond the woman who was hit in the face with a brick good lord and then it was kiki palmer not long after this and now this young woman cassie i just felt overwhelmed overwhelmed so i decided just to after because I was watching Demas. Demas did the live, and he was enumerating like the complaints of you know the allegations of the on the lawsuit, and it was just so upsetting. Like he ended his live pretty early, and I was so I didn't even realize how upset I was until I just I just couldn't really function. I just kind of puttered out. And petered out, it just had like an a, a emotional breakdown because it brought back memories of my own trauma. And I just went to bed. I, I that's what I did. I went to bed. I went to sleep. I'm like, you know what? This is too much. Is this this seems like it's open season on black women these days to be assaulted by black men. And I was kind of surprised because a lot of the black men who are usually in my comments with these, I don't know, I don't know what they're in with these conspiracy theories were quiet. And um, I guess Kiki had the receipts, good for her. And uh, I was going to get up this morning and I was just thinking about how woefully unprepared women are to go out into this world as free people and still be preyed upon by men with power. And I'm, I'm not going to denote it by saying all men, because obviously not all men. I'm not even, leave me alone, okay? But mostly in situations, nothing is here to protect you from what's out there. So that's what I was going to do my video on. I was going to go live. That was going to be my live that I was going to do like in the daylight, not in the wee hours of the morning. And scrolling through my phone and to my surprise, I read this article. And I'm shocked. Because first I thought I read it wrong. And then I realized. Lies. Oh no, you didn't read that wrong. They settled that case. Like, okay. Now, I'm not even mad at Cassie for settling the case because I understand when it comes to abuse, which even all men say that that's subjective. Not all men, but they, a lot of them are like, oh, well, they're subjective. What do you mean by abuse? Even though it's clearly, clearly spoken. You know, I understand when she, if she were to go to court, how her trauma, her pain, her embarrassment could be twisted and skewed up it to be this horrific narrative that had absolutely nothing to do with what Pididi put her through. I keep calling him Pididi, I don't know. I, I can't, you know, all his little iterations are 
so sick of them. Anywho, without further ado, I want to go into this article right here. Actually, for those of you or those of us who've been living under a rock, I want to play this little synopsis so we get a good idea. And it's, it's not, don't worry, it's not long. It's just a, a short little thing. Why? Or, or, or get a good glimpse into why the uh, lawsuit was settled so quickly. Cassie. She filed a lawsuit against Diddy in New York federal courts. All right, TMZ. Executive producer, not to unpack. with these allegations for sure. Why don't you walk us through the meat of what she's alleging here? Really, as they say, a uh, uh, bombshell allegations and Diddy is denying all of this, but in the lawsuit, she does claim that uh, there was an incident in 2018 uh, here in LA that they had gone out to dinner and after dinner, uh, went back to her place. She He dropped her off, but she claims that he forced his way into her home and that uh, he forced her to have sex. So she is alleging a rape in that case. And then there's another uh, thing in the, another allegation is that she says that Diddy several times at different hotels around the country would hire male prostitutes and force her to have sex with them. This is the part of the suit where she's alleging sex trafficking because she's saying that, that this would happen over state lines uh, and that's, that would be the reason for filing this in federal court. Um, those are the most serious allegations in there. There are also some allegations of uh, just domestic violence, um, uh, domestic battery, mm -hmm. uh, and, and at least one other incident where, where she Hints, she does not call Diddy out for this specifically, but hints that he might have been involved in uh, um, uh, setting another rapper, Kid Cudi, setting his car on fire. Wow. Uh, yeah. No, and it's fascinating yeah. because Kid Cudi's people responded saying that's all true. True. Right. Right. And 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 I think what they were saying is that it is true that Cuddy's uh, car was blown up and it, that it happened sometime and, uh, and Cassie had had a brief uh, affair. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I guess, like, talk to us a little bit about the timeline of your relationship because she met him when she was 19 and he was 37. Right. Now, she is not alleging... Uh, <laughs> there's nothing in the lawsuit where she's alleging that this was... Uh, uh, but some people have pointed out that that fact that she was, uh, you know, very young when they met. Um, so, you know, I, look, we got to we have to say for Diddy's side of this, because we did speak to his attorney and his attorney said that these were all these. They're not surprised by these uh, allegations in the lawsuit. They said that they've heard all of these for several months now. And that she was attempting to blackmail Diddy. That's their word, blackmail. Mm -hmm. um, Thirty mil for thirty million dollars, uh, claiming uh, that she was going to write a tell-all book unless she got that sum. They rejected that, and and um, they said that this now the lawsuit is sort of her. fallback plan because clearly she did, couldn't get a, uh, a book deal. Right, and the timing of the lawsuit, it's a Survivor's Act. So the, uh, you know, the 
allegation of rape would not have, there's no statute of limitations on that. There are some of the allegations uh, that might have run, that where the statutes would have run, but you're right, in New York now, um, it's the, like you said, the Survivors yeah. uh, Act, that a lot of these things, regardless of when it happened, uh, could still uh, be brought, to, uh, that Diddy could have to face this in court. And uh, important to also know that this is a civil suit that she has filed. This is, at this point, just about money. But right. if any of these things uh, get on the radar of law enforcement, there could be investigation. Yeah, interesting. Charles, thanks so much for joining us and shedding some light on this. We appreciate it. And we'll check out yeah. TM. That sheds some light on you would choose to settle right now because criminally, he might, might, just might be liable. But I want to go into the article. Because I want to understand and maybe they will shed a little more light. Uh, well, I, you know why it happened, but why they came to uh, a settlement so quickly. So we know, know here that Sean Diddy called one day after the singer uh, filed a lawsuit against and warned in the lawsuit to their mutual satisfaction. The parties added that there will be no further details about the terms of the agreement released publicly. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. And I get that. That's what Ventura said. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. Yeah, I get that. When it comes to women in the court system and abuse, mm, her attorney, Doug Douglas Wichter, said, I am very proud of Ms. Ventura for having the strength to go public with her lawsuit. She ought to be commended for doing so. I agree. I totally agree. Combs added, we have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the year to me. Ventura was met in 2005 when she was 19 years old. You know this, he was 37. He would begin dating. I like how they write like this was all mutual. If you read that, that complaint, he really pursued her in a predatory manner. Like he, he really was predatory in his pursuit of her. And she he, he did sign her to a nine album deal, tying her to him for a very long time, a nine album deal. This young woman had claimed she was stuck in a decade long, long cycle of abuse, violence and sex trafficking. After years of silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself for the other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. Uh, New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approached, and it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I have experienced and that I will be covering, going through what, she, what if, girl. Even if it was a, a, a small, a, a fraction of what's true in that, it what's alleged in that, let's say, I can't say true, what's alleged in that, that lawsuit. I can't imagine how she got on, on a day-to-day -day basis with that kind of stuff in the back of your mind, hanging on, uh, you know, that trauma, that abuse, that that PTSD, because you do suffer from PTSD. People don't know this. I mean, I, I don't know if they know or not, but 
you really do have the effects of it. You know, if you get into an argument and someone punched you out of the blue, you still have the the recurrence, like the, the memory of being punched. So you, you have reluctance to speak up or speak out on something because you remember that the last time you did that, this is what happened to you. And you still remember that. So, wow. Life recovering. All aspects of Ms. Ventura's life is controlled by either Mr. Combs or his management companies. Thursday's complaint filed in New York read, Ventura had also alleged that she would receive beatings from Combs that was so severe that he would hide her at hotels for days at a time to let her bruises heal. These hotels for days, that's in quotations. Um, for those of you who are listening via the podcast. She had alleged that during her time with Combs, he would also force her to engage in encounters with ex-workers that he called freak-offs or FOs, and that mean drugs, oh my God, and alcohol. Combs' lawyer, Ben Brathman, had denied Ventura's allegations. Of course, he's going to deny. Deny, 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 deny. That's what they do. They deny everything. Then of course he's not gonna sit there and say, Well, I did it. He's he's not gonna um where are we here? Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and misventures demand of thirty million dollars under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Brothman, that's what the lawyer said. Despite withdrawing her initial Miss Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. Ah. The joke here is that Mr. Combs had a reputation worthy of being tarnished. Like, seriously. This man, let's be real. Is anybody looking at Diddy thinking, what a fine, upstanding, quality man that he is. Are, are we really looking at him seeing all that? Because I haven't looked at him and saw and seen any of that in years. Years and years. Since he burst onto the scene, I ain't never seen that. So I don't know what kind of, what tarnish she could possibly bring to an already dilapidated reputation. But okay. Okay. Wigder refuted these claims, adding... Mr. Combs offered, oh, her, 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 her lawyer, her lawyer refuted those claims, adding, Mr. Combs offered Ms. Ventura eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing of this lawsuit. <laughs> That's more like it. She rejected his efforts and decided to give a voice to all women who suffer in silence. Ms. Ventura should be applauded for her bravery. Go ahead. I bet you dollars to douche marks that he offered her money to keep it quiet. Because I was hearing before I went to bed last night that women were coming out of the woodworks. Danny Lee Kane was in support of Cassie. Other women were in support of Cassie. They were supporting her. And what was that blonde hair, uh, what was her name? Oh God, what was her name? She was part of Danny Lee Kane and he fired her. Yeah. For years. Mm -hmm. And I think it was in his best, not necessarily in hers, clean. He's not, he doesn't have an outstanding reputation. He simply does not have an outstanding reputation as being an upstanding man. Now, this is potentially why he settled. I believe that's why he settled. It was in his best interest because she could she could come with the receipts and 
you know, how old is he? 90, 100 years old? <laughs> so all his exes will come out? <laughs> Let me stop. Anyhow, with all, his, with all these exes, all these women, I'm sure they all have a story to tell. I'm sure they do. And I can't help but think about Kim Porter because I, I knew her. Her, like I didn't know her, know her, but I, whenever I saw her, I always liked her, and I always felt that she was a woman who he simply didn't deserve. And I don't know what it is about these men who are predatory on these young women, and they want to mold them, and make them, and, and and control them, and humiliate them, and humble them, and ugh, it's just gross and disgusting and horrific. <laughs> Somebody called it demonic. It's demonic, Machiavellian. It's 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 poison. Just oh God. I really, really, really wanted to see him get his day in court. I really wanted him to be dragged. But I believe, and this is my belief, that he knew he couldn't take that kind of drag. He couldn't sustain that kind of drag. Because, you know, he wants it out of the public eye as quickly as possible. So that the, the law enforcement won't say, um, um, isn't that illegal? Yeah, those are criminal acts. Anyway, that's all I have about this today. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't even going to make this video. So here we are making this video. Anyways, tell me what you think in the comments. How do you feel about this whole settlement thing? The the problem I have is I, I haven't even recovered from the complaint. I haven't recovered from the lawsuit. My God. And it's settled already. Whew. Lord have mercy. He was. Again, tell me what you think in the comments. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, until next time. Bye.